Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you all for coming. That's a lot of people here. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the topic is a little bit changed, um, but it's basically the same, so you probably won't be disappointed. Um, so I'm Jacob Bonnefant. Uh I do like a whole lot of more things than just XR and VR AR. Um, so feel free to talk about this, uh, talk to me about this uh, later. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about what XR is how we do XR, uh, and then wrap, try to wrap the whole thing up in uh, quite a bit of short time. So, what is XR? Um, I mean, it's just a bunch of names where they replace the VR or AR with an X. Uh, but in like virtual reality, you replace the entire reality around you with something else, a virtual reality. Where in augmented reality, you add to your reality. So a heads-up display is augmented re reality. Uh, and then the rest of the names that you can he hear in these um, things are, are just basically marketing terms around the same things, basically. Uh, but could you also think about XR in the use case of where you run into these things, like entertainment and work and your life? Um, hey, you guys in the back here. Okay, I'll, t I'll try to speak louder, yeah. Uh, so, in entertainment, uh, you often think about virtual reality because that's sort of the, where most people see it, either in movies or, you know, things like that. Uh, so, entertainment, you have games. Um, and this is where most people actually, or where it's most common to run into any kind of XR. Uh, you have, you know, headsets are actually becoming kind of common. Uh, from very expensive ones to cheap ones, um, but also you know cobalt boxes and a phone, um, but, and there's a whole bunch of different games. I chose this games just because it wasn't a shooter, so I tried to get something different. Um, uh, but you also have XR in work, and this is probably new to you, but it's you know slowly getting out there, uh, and this is. A pretty cool use case uh, that I'm showing now, where you have a user that's wearing the AR glasses. So you're basically seeing out, but you, things can be added to it. And he's a call with an operator who's seeing what he is seeing. And he sort of so can guide this user through various things. So he can actually draw on the reality, so say basically don't push this button or pull out this hard disk because it's broken because I'm sitting here in front of my computer with all of the information that I have. Or he's maybe a specialist and say, you know, he can tell him, you know, how to repair a very important, very expensive bit of engine or piece of equipment and you have this user who is, might not have training on it and they can much easier communicate and there's a much higher bandwidth of information that can go through. Uh, and this is actually the Daiquiri hardware, so if you were at XCC last year, you actually had a chance to try it out. Um, so, uh, But then there's also life. And life is kind of a in the future. Uh, there's not so much out there. Uh, and one of the important things is that technology has to make your life easier. And right now I think <coughs> XR it's not making our life easier that much. Uh, this, for VR, it's you know that's a high level setup. Um, you know, how many times have you restarted Steam VR just to get the headsets working and things like that? So how are we expecting that to actually make things easier? Uh, or how much time does it take to pick up your phone and get the, you know the AR display up and running good? So there's a lot of work in there, and I'll actually show chose this picture book say Spectre to the Future and it's a great movie. Uh, but his doc's glasses actually have AR in them uh, where he's actually looking into them and trying to see getting a rear view mirror and how fast it's going. So it's pretty cool that such an old movie actually has elements of AR already in them. But his clothes are kind of, yeah. Uh, so then moving on, how do we do XR, especially in open source? 
uh, and then looking at very simple, you have your programs, uh, your application, your games, your things that is actually making, uh, that is actually shown to the user. Uh, you have your platforms, and for to draw a parallel between graphics, this is your X, your Mesa, all that you're operating your Linux. And then there's hardware, uh, which, you know, kind of glossing over right here now. Uh, so what's in an, so what's in a platform? Well, there's API, uh, for instance, for graphics, that's OpenGL, there's drivers, Mesa, algorithms, well, helper drivers and compa uh, compositors, and Wayland, and input map and mapping, you know, things like that. But that's also what's in Open uh, Next, or like all of these things needs to go together. Um, because you can actually composite multiple applications, so you have to reuse a whole lot of things, but also you have to completely write it anew because it's not just a screen, it's reality. Um, but most importantly, we need an API. Uh, and currently, we have the situation on the, the left where uh, we have a whole bunch of different APIs and there's no really uniform way of talking to it. Uh, luckily, there's just like OpenGL, let's work on something called OpenXR. Uh, and it's made by the same people that made OpenGL a uh, from Kronos. So uh, there's people who are much better at talking about this than me. So there's a link uh, once the slides are up. You can look at that. Uh, we'll actually talk a lot more about OpenXR, what it is, and what specifics. It's coming hopefully soon. Um, so, But what we also need is just like we have in Mesa, we need a community of XR developers. Uh, so we need a something where we are collaborators trying to build up something from the ground um, based on OpenXR and trying to build a community around it once we can actually release it. Um, and we actually want FOSS to not just be lagging behind. I mean, Mesa is soon, like, once the patches land, will actually be the first time ever that it actually been up to the same version of OpenGL that uh, has been released forever. Uh, so, but we want to actually be leading it. <coughs> we want people to come to this community to d do experimentations, to work on XR, virtual reality, and augmented reality, and actually pay the wave, not just keeping up. And we want it to be open and accessible to everybody, so it can, can become part of everybody's life, not just hackers. Um, that's kind of odd. Uh, so try to wrap it up a little bit. Uh, uh, yeah, as I said, it's it's a cool future out there, and we can, we are in the opportunity to actually be proactive, not just keeping up. And there's a whole bunch of work as well. Uh, so yeah. Um, Again, this is what you can talk about me. Try to talk right now about just talk. Uh, and uh, thank you, and uh, any questions? Questions? Yes. Uh, you talk about uh, to be a guy like OpenGL at Google. Are you planning to make a standardization for it? I standard. Uh, are you planning to make a standardization for it? Uh, so there's work inside of Kronos uh, and that we are part of, uh, of making a standard API for that. Uh, but um, like, I can't really talk more about that uh, than that, unfortunately. Uh, so it's, yeah, unfortunately. But yes, we are planning to do it, and we are planning to make a runtime for that, and we are planning to open source that uh, once we can, basically once the spec has been released. Are any of the big uh, VR players involved in this? Uh, uh, are any of the big VR players involved in um, OpenXR? Yes. There's Oculus, there's Valve, there's Epic, I think, um, the Google, all of the big ones. Uh, I don't know if I can <laughs> say uh, the, the rest of them that have just joined. Microsoft, even Microsoft is there, so. Uh, yes? As far as I know, most of the VR hardware is not No, that's correct. Any recommendations for which hardware, especially components, can be useful? Oh, yeah. Um, 
So there's Project North Star, which is do it yourself. Uh, I think there's very ma one person has managed to build it themselves outside of uh, Leap Motion uh, that build it. But uh, we're planning to try and do see what's actually needed to do that, and then do the really hard bits and try and enable people more. Um, for hardware, I actually don't know. For controllers, uh, I would just uh, I think Vive is what we are going to use the most, so that's probably be the most supported in the future by open source. Uh, but hopefully, somebody will hack together, uh, or uh, you know, we always had a use case of people throwing together stuff out of old V motes and ping pong balls and a camera. Uh, so uh, we will see where we end up, basically. Uh, anybody else? I have like 13 minutes left, so well. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I was fast. So, yeah. Yep. So is there like, like, like an early access beta, anything? Is there anything available? So right now, no, uh, there's just the talk, uh, unfortunately, for OpenXR. I mean, there's all of the other APIs out there that can take a look at. Uh, we have, you know, I founded OpenHMD a long time ago, and that's available. And uh, can you produce that? Um, but, but you are involved in it, so, so what, what, what does it look like? OpenXR. I, I, I don't know exactly what I can talk about, so I just refer to the talk where people have actually vetted through it and they more, much more in a presented way talk about it. But what you do is you get an API or you get a device, you tell it sort of a what you want from this, and it gives you back the information gives you back the user input, uh, it gives you things that you render into and how to render into it. That's what I described as a hardware, and then you just keep doing that for all the frames and it will sort of... Uh, but you, you should remove the open and I put secret. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, well, you know, it's open, uh, it's open when it was released, unfortunately. Uh, and its <laughs> standards are kind of hard to do. Especially when there are actually people that are looking out for things to patent and then try to sue them. So this is a common thing that kernels actually have to deal with. So it's an imperfect solution to a ver the current situation. I wish there was, you know, I could just do it in open, unfortunately, but I, yeah. But are, are what stage is it right now? So, what, is it uh, working or is it? Uh, <laughs> you can't tell. Yeah. What can you tell? Uh, Go through the talk that they uh, very nicely present about it. Yeah. And Ooh. that's basically it, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, it's it's going to be open. <laughs> uh, and so we it's are. Not open yet, it it's not open yet, but it's going to be open. I mean, <coughs> once it's released. Yes? Uh, have you ever contained any TPU waiter? Sorry? Because I'm caring about the performance problems. Uh, yeah, anyway, you see, there are many ways to provide such an uh, open API, uh, open VR API for, the, uh, uh, for here, for VR usage. But uh, there are some differences between, between lens. It's uh, quite hard uh, to uh, build something only fix for one plan for you mentioned uh, Unity uh, layer, yeah. which was uh, worked badly at the uh, AMD uh, oh, plan yes. for. So hopefully, I mean, hopefully that API will solve these issues, and if it doesn't act solve it exactly oh, for you, you, you can add extension. Can have any problem for that? Yeah. Yes. So you didn't have lots of security documents to solve this problem. Well, uh, actually, solving this problem is something well, well, yeah, that, that I think we. That's a driver issue, so I think we can talk about it so well on the outside. Okay. Thank you.